Although there were no words, this was clearly an invitation to talk. He flipped open his cell phone. She picked up on the first ring. Hey, Aaron, she purred into his ear. It hasn't even been a day and I miss you like fuck. I miss you too. I got your present. She paused. Oh, yes, my surprise. A great surprise. By the way, who took the pictures? Oddly, the question just occurred to him. The photograph seemed so direct, so personal, as if he'd merely been peeking at her through her window without the mediation of a camera's glassy eye. Tamara laughed. A friend. She did a good job, didn't she? Very arty. Sexy, too, he said in a low voice. They got me thinking about what I'd like to do to you. Oh, yeah? I guess that means you're not mad. Mad? You don't think I'm a naughty girl posing for pictures without my clothes on and putting them in your suitcase without your permission? For a moment, he was speechless. Why should he be anything but happy and hard? Another voice sliced through the silence. Tamara, stop yakking with your boyfriend and let's go. We have to meet Ryan at the club at 10. Who's that? He asked, feeling off balance yet again. Diana, the aforementioned brilliant porn photographer. She came over for dinner and now we're going to hear her friend play saxophone. I have to do something to stop from going crazy without you. He exhaled into the phone. Now you are mad, aren't you? You should have called earlier, you know. I was waiting all evening. I had to go to dinner with some clients, he protested. I know. Her voice softened. Look, I'm sorry, I can't talk now, and I'll probably be back late. But you'll call me tomorrow? Yeah, good night. He pressed the disconnect button. It was a rather surly goodbye, but suddenly he wasn't in the mood for any more words. In fact, she was right. He was mad. Shamara once told him anger was a message, a sign you should change something in your life. She was always reading those get in touch with your inner self books, but what she said made sense this time. Maybe this week's separation was a good thing, a chance to breathe. In the last three months they'd gotten so close they were practically welded together. His dick seemed to agree, for now it drooped lazily against his groin. With a shrug he got up, undressed, brushed his teeth. He'd make a point of putting Tamar out of his mind for the next few days, get a little space in his life. If she wanted to talk, she could call him. Braced by his new indifference, he pulled down the covers, got into bed, and reached over to switch off the light. He paused, his hand floating above the nightstand. There it was again, that picture of Tamara's ass. And it was one hell of an ass, too. He picked up the photograph, his eyes fixed on the rich curves of her hips. The silky fabric of the panties shimmered. The paper itself seemed to soften in his hands. The real Tamar might be off at a club flirting with some guy named Ryan, but he had her best asset right here in bed with him. What the fuck, jerking off always made him sleep better anyway. Still staring at the picture, he slipped imaginary fingers under the elastic and slowly peeled the panties down inch by inch. The black silk receded to reveal Tamar's creamy flesh, the shadow of another female furrow. He'd licked her there for the first time last night. His tongue prickled with the memory of the flavor, spicy, exotic, forbidden. He closed his fist around his cock and began to tug. Meanwhile, his other set of hands pulled the panties all the way down to her knees and over the ankles off the edge of the picture where they fell in a heap on the floor. Tamara was completely naked now, just the way he liked her. Then, to his surprise, her hips began to undulate, beckoning. He could even smell her fragrance, yeast and warmth, like walking past a bakery in the morning. He was good at this. A picture might be worth a thousand words, but what about a movie? In another blink, he grabbed Tamara's hips and coaxed her up on her knees. He had to pause a moment to admire that view, her magnificent posterior tapering into a slim waist. Her back was flushed down. She panted softly. And although she said not a word, he could hear the question swirling in her head. What are you going to do to me now? What, indeed? There were so many choices. He could fuck her from behind, of course, or take her the back way. 
They hadn't done that yet. Or maybe the thought made him catch his breath. He could push this new exhibitionist streak in her and snap a few more pictures for his collection. Tamara offering him her naked ass. Tamara's hand between her legs, strumming her clit, her vulva plump and glistening. He pumped his cock faster. Yeah, why not make a little show off go all the way? She'd proven herself brazen enough to flaunt her goods for that obnoxious friend of hers. He'd met Diana once and found her abrasive, almost butch. Suddenly, an unwanted image flashed into his head. Diana with her camera grinning as her thick, phallic lens edged closer to Tamar's willing body. What had happened off camera on that green bedspread? He scowled at the photograph, but this time anger only fueled his desire, his cock stiffening further until it throbbed. There was only one thing to do. He had to teach Tamara a lesson. He pulled his hand back and landed a smarting blow right on that plump ass. The next part came in slow motion, the prickly warmth spreading over his palm, the answering jiggle of her flesh. Tamara's yelp of surprise followed by a lingering sigh. And then came a jolt of hot shame. He was a pervert, wasn't he? Tamara would never stand for it, even to indulge his kinky side. She proudly called herself a feminist. She often took control in bed and other places, too. She'd never consent to bend over and have her ass spanked. And yet, wasn't she the one that put these thoughts in his head? He glanced at the photograph. What he saw then seemed too real to be imagination. Tamara was actually wiggling her butt in invitation, as if she wanted him to do it again. He wanted it, too. With a scooping motion, his hand sliced through the air and landed on her cheeks with a smack. She let out a strangled cry, but then she was back again with that eager, almost taunting wiggle. There was no mistaking it now. Feminist she might be, but offering her ass up for chastisement was turning her on in a major way. He rewarded her with a volley of slaps. She groaned and burrowed her face into the pillow. That's for posing naked, but I owe you more for sneaking around and messing with my personal things. You deserve to be punished for this, don't you? Tamara whispered in yes. Open your legs wider. We're going to spank you right on your asshole. Jesus, where'd he get that idea? But Tamara seemed to like it well enough, for she immediately parted her knees, then arched her back so her buttocks were spread wide to accept their due. He aimed right for the tender pink skin. She let out a cry and her body jerked forward, then bobbed back. It was like a game, he thought. X-rated tennis. He'd send off a volley, she'd send it back. Was anything more satisfying than that ping of a ball hitting the racket on the sweet spot? And he was hitting Tamara on her sweet spot, all right. She was babbling now, a torrent of words pouring from her lips to mirror the pussy juice oozing down her thighs. Please. Again, yes, oh God, I'm coming, fuck, I'm coming. Which is precisely when he shot his wad onto his belly, his own ass rocking into the mattress as he fucked the air. When he was finished, he had to smile. Tamar had gotten him so worked up with those pictures, he'd even forgotten to set aside some tissues for cleanup. But this had been a good one, worth the mess. A little kinky maybe, but very hot. He'd just gotten back into bed after washing up when his cell phone trilled out to Mars' ringtone. The evening held yet another surprise. And there's more. <laughs> <laughs>